building site, a natural building site, you don't have the plumber screaming and yelling at the carpenter who's yelling at the foreman and throwing power tools around. It's not that aggro kind of um, environment. It's, it's very kind of calm. Uh, this one right here, this little guy up, or uh, that's pretty good the way it is. Right there, yeah. It's, uh, one of the strong themes is to do it for almost no money, mm -hmm. and the second theme is to do it without damaging the environment, and the third thing is not to exploit other people or other nations by using their materials or their labor to provide those necessities for myself. It was so inspiring coming up here. Seeing what Sean had done by himself, basically for free, and it had saved his life as well. There were all the components, there were community, connection, close to the earth, organic gardening. 100 mile, that's it. That's how we need to build our houses too if we want to be responsible to the planet. We're drawing down enormous stocks of resources that have built up over time. So we're over harvesting our forests, we're over harvesting fish stocks, the soils are becoming uh, eroded. And so we're living as if the planet were about a third larger than it really is. And as a result, we, we can keep this going for a little while, but we're shrinking the earth under our very feet. Those of us in wealthy countries must reduce our footprints to our fair earth share. From in North America, an average of nine hectares required per capita down to less than two. Well, that's an 80% reduction in the demands we make on the planet, which translates into an 80% reduction in our material consumption. Well, some are horrified at that prospect, but the reality is we can envisage lifestyles in which that would be a perfectly appropriate way to live. Uh, it would free up a lot of time. We wouldn't have to be scrambling like rats to, to get more and more if we had sufficiency and uh, more and more time to dedicate to personal development, to family, to community, to a whole array of values that we don't even, that we've lost, frankly then I think we could live quite comfortably on much reduced footprints. I bought into a bill of goods that said, you dies with most toys wins. And I think we hear that often enough in all the media and everything that it becomes part of who we are. We, we believe it. And I'm trying to get myself out of the mindset of believing it. If you could actually make dedicated and intelligent experimental housing blocks that aren't actually just a way for people that want to reject society to go and live. If you could actually make it benefit and be researched and you know all that kind of stuff, if you could make it credibly experimental, I'd say that would be fantastic. I don't know personally of any zone like that in Canada. Um, the caution I need to say there, though, is that if we do accept an alternative, we are going to require some kind of engineering or comparable analysis to say that it works as well as regular building construction. Often what you find with these natural products like earth bag and straw, and particularly things like cob, is that the engineering requirements to meet code today are very difficult to reconcile with these types of products because they're not and you can't you can't do the engineering calculations in the same way and obviously today as opposed to 500 years ago we all carry professional liability and we all have to you know make sure that when we sign off on something that's been built as we have designed it right now um I am a builder, I know how things work. So when I put a place up, I know it's safe, even though it is not to any code and probably would not, without a lot of engineers, be able to be approved. I think the code has a very necessary place in our society. I think we need the protection of educated people to assure that the homes that we're building 
are safe, healthy, uh, all that. In addition to that, I think it's really important that the part of the population that wishes to experiment and um, live in a shifting paradigm have that opportunity that we can um, direct ourselves, that we can let the system go. The best thing that we're going to rely on uh, to survive and to prevail uh, would be our openness, our flexibility. Um, uh, you know, if we hold, hold our mind rigid, uh, change is going to, you know, I think come pretty rapidly. Uh, and uh, we need to keep ourselves flexible uh, and use our creativity to, to help us uh, survive as a species on this planet. I think it's really important that we look seriously at our global changed, our, our climate changed world and start allowing the people who choose to, to explore some of the alternatives that we're not going to look at until we need to and then it's a little late. <laughs>